Good morning, folks. Today is the 26th of May, 2020. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together as we pray together, as we read scripture together, as we spend some time together. If you are joining us for the first time, let me say thank you. And let me tell you that each episode follows a really simple pattern of a mixture of prayer, scripture, and music. It's easy, you'll pick it up as we go along. Before we start, don't forget, if you'd like to download the script for today, there is a download the script button in the show notes. Click the button, you'll get a PDF of today's episode. If you'd like to support Walking the Way, and we would really appreciate it if you would support Walking the Way, then the link to the giving page is in the show notes. We would really appreciate it. As I said, we would appreciate your support. Finally, if you want to know more information about me or the podcast, head to rayborrett.co.uk. All the information about the podcast or me is there. We always start each leg of walking the way with our opening prayer. So let's pray, shall we? I will say to my God, my Lord and my King, how abundant is your goodness, O Lord, which you have stored up for those who fear you. But what are you to those who love you? What are you to those who serve you with their whole heart? In this especially you have showed me the sweetness of your love, that when I was not you made me. When I went far astray from you, you brought me back again that I might serve you, and have commanded me to love you. I wish that I was able for at least one day to do some worthy service for you. Truly you are my Lord, and I your servant, bound to serve you with all my might. This I wish to do, this is my desire, and supply whatever is lacking in me, I pray. Amen. Matthew 24 Verses 38 and 39. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So I'm having this clear out of my hard drive because I'm steadily running out of space. And I'm going through my videos because videos tend to take up the most space, and I find this video that I used at church once that I hadn't seen for a while. It's quite thought-provoking, actually, and it did get me thinking. It's a video of people coming out of out of church after a service, and they're all happy, and they're you know they're really friendly, and they're shaking hands, and they're hugging. They're doing the things that we're no longer allowed to do in church, apart from the fact that we're not supposed to be worshiping together. But as they come out, there's these people dotted around the car park of the church, people that we wouldn't assume, normally see in church. We probably would see them, but we wouldn't see them in the state they're in now. So there's a woman who's been physically abused. There's a man who is an alcoholic. There's a woman who is sold each night. And then there's a homeless person. None of these people are noticed by those leaving the church. And it struck me that how often we worship and that worship has little or no impact on our lives. How often when we worship has it so little impact in our lives? A friend of mine calls it the warm, fuzzy, and cold chill worship. It makes us feel all warm, and then we get those chills that run up and down our spine, and then we walk out the building. All we take from us is the warm, fuzzy, and the cold chill. So little of it really impacts our lives. It's probably not a long shot that I doubt that you would have ever heard this verse about the people around Noah and thought about the worship that you go to in the same sort of breath. But there is something of the ordinary of the experience of those who did not know what was coming. Eating, drinking, life carrying on without a clue about what God was doing. And it strikes me that sometimes when we worship, when we'll be allowed to worship again, that actually our worship is a bit like that. We carry on without being truly aware of what God is doing. If being in the presence of God is not driving you to go out and change the world, then I wager that all you've experienced is a really good, a really good concert. Maybe some motivational words. You've experienced a really good band and a really good worship leader. It becomes a bit like noise and, you know, it's a bit like the noise and thunder that Elijah experienced. It's simply noise and thunder because God most likely won't be in it when we are able to get back to church, 
and we experience the warm fuzzies and the cold chills again. Recognize that we are standing in the presence of the Almighty God. Worship should drive us to our knees and make us cry holy, happened to Isaiah. It should make us fall flat on our faces as we come into the presence of the most awesome power in the universe. Anything else? It's just a warm fuzzy and a cold chill. And then it's just noise. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's readings, we read about Paul's journey to Philippi. Let's ask God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning, shall we? Father, open our hearts and minds to the words that you would have us hear today. Speak to us through the words that we listen to and the words that we read. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the New King James Version, and today we're reading Acts 16. Then he came to Derbe and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. And as he went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep, which were determined by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go to Bithynia, but the Holy Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man from Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Therefore sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city of that part of Macedonia, a colony. 
and we were staying in that city for some days, and on the Sabbath day we went out of the city to the riverside, where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who met there. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira, who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul, and when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl, possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and us, and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. When they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everybody's chains were loosed and the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposed that the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, and to all who were in the house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. When it was day, the magistrates sent the officers, saying, Let these men go. So the keeper of the prison reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said to them, You have beaten us openly, uncondemned Romans, and have thrown us into prison. And now do they put us out secretly? No, indeed. Let them come themselves and get us out. And the officers told these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. Then they came and pleaded with him and brought them out and asked him to depart from the city. So they went out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they encouraged them and departed. We're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And then afterwards we're going to say our prayers together.
before we pray. Just a reminder that if you would like us to pray for you, then drop us a line through the usual channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email, our voicemail service. The links are all in the show notes, so please let us know. We would love to be able to share in those experiences. We would love to be able to support you through prayer. A little bit of sad news, unfortunately. You remember yesterday we prayed for Joanne and for Richard and Dorothy, her, her mum and dad. Joanne passed away yesterday. Um, and so our prayer today is devoted to Richard and Dorothy. So let's pray, shall we? Comfort me with your love, O God. Wrap me up in your strong embrace. Shelter me from the storm. O Lord, envelop me in your tender care. By day I pour out my heartbreak to you. By night I give you my racing thoughts in you. I take refuge in you. I will not be afraid. You hold me strong, you hold me safe. Calm my fearful heart, O God. Still my anxious mind, O Lord. For all my life is found in you. All my being is given to you. All my hope begins in you. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You've been listening to Walking the Way. All the details for today's episode can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for the press. If you want to partner with Walking the Way, if you'd like to donate towards the project, that would be amazing. We are looking at upgrading all our equipment, so any donations would be fantastic. Please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And for more information, head to rayborrett.co.uk. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Don't forget you can also listen to us on TuneIn and YouTube. My name is Ray, and so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue Walking the Way. Walking the Way.